uh, I was uh, communicating with someone who talked about the Don Smith circuit. And I uh, studied the Don Smith circuits a little bit. And my idea was to make a video to show the resonance phenomenon that you can find and also Mr. Smith has, find, has found in the circuits that he made. So this video is about the phenomenon that you can see that happen when you work with self-resonant circuits. The problem with the Don Smith circuit is that um, perhaps he made some resonant circuits, but one of his ideas was that you could take out, out of the atmosphere, out of the earth, whatever, a kind of um, unknown energy and that had to be brought into a kind of, uh, say, amplifying um, resonance. I mean that the resonance, the resonance of that unknown energy um, is not destructive but constructive. So that you could get out of a resonance circuit an enormous amount of energy. Well, the, the things that he saw are uh, can be demonstrated in this circuit. It is an oscillator. It is self-oscillating. It oscillates on approximately 33 kilohertz. You can make such a coil yourself. Here is the demo circuit. Ferrite rod, windings on it. Uh, when you are really interested, I will dissect that coil and send you the exact information about the numbers of turns. I've written here 60 and 100 and 200, but that's on the basis of my memory. So everyone interested, um, I will dissect that ferrite rod. And uh, the signal is coupled back from the output to the input is sent back to the Darlington here. And then the whole circuit starts to oscillate on its own frequency. It's self-resonant. So, let's look. Let's look what happens. Here is that circuit, the 2N3055. Darlington combined with the BD139, the bias potentiometer, 100 nanofarad backup link capacitor, supplied by 8 volts approximately, takes approximately 50 milliamperes now, and this is the waveform, and this is the frequency. The interesting of this waveform is you hear now a beep on the background and that's part of this waveform. So you can see here that the coil is kicked into oscillation, then oscillates out, then there is a period and then it's kicked into oscillation again. That's one of the properties of this circuit. And that makes that uh, uh, some resonance uh, effects are better visible. You can see here in the schematic that I've uh, showed all the voltages that you can measure. So when you connect an AC voltmeter from the positive lead and leave the other end of the meter open, you read 0 0.8 volt. When you do that here on the top of the coil, leave the end open, you read 7 volts. When you connect the AC meter between the two electrodes of the secondary coil, you read 14 volts. When you uh, connect your AC meter here on the minus, in fact that's the ground, and that's the ground that comes from our mains, main supply you read 0 0.8 volt. When you connect your um, AC meter here on the, this part of that coil and leave the other end open, you read 3 
up to 7 volts and that depends whether you touch the other open end with your hand and when you measure the voltage here between this point and that point you measure, measure 23 AC volts um, and that all has there's nothing special here happening here uh, you can say uh, well we, we supply it with 8 volts and now we have here cert, uh, certainly 23 volts and even not on the secondary side could be logic because there is a ratio a windings ratio but what you see here is the F, is the uh, so-called um, auto transformation when a coil is driven into oscillation uh, on its resonance frequency you get a higher voltage even when it is one and only coil so first effects that I want to show is that the frequency depends you can hear it beep the beeping comes of the say the square wave here the period in between that the coil is kicked into oscillation and that's the beeping that you hear but at the same time that coil is driven and when you touch it with your hand somewhere and that means also that a resonant circuit is sensitive so um, in this case all the effects this is a capacitive effect and a resistive effect from my hand my body forms a kind of capacitor and now there is in fact a capacitor from the collector here of that second transistor to ground this is my body here between these two points and when I touch the base for instance of the driver transistor you can also see and here the frequency change so <clears throat> the fact that you measure here all kinds of voltages even with an open end let me demonstrate that first here is the positive probe of the meter this is a negative probe it's now connected here so here this location here you can read here it's on the 50 volt scale when I touch that other probe with my hand the voltage goes up uh, sorry yes the voltage goes up uh, and in fact energy will leave the resonant circuit That will be a very tiny amount anyway. And when for instance uh, I, I measure here, <coughs> here, you see that enormous amount of voltage, enormous, not enormous anyway, but say 24 volts between this part here. <coughs> And that part here and it's also strange that when we for instance um, I have only one hand to demonstrate it so it takes some time now I disconnected the meter and that has also effect on the frequency when we measure for instance between the ground the minus of my circuit and uh, look here at the ground you can also see a tiny voltage that's very strange but the fact is that the whole circuit the complete circuit here is straying energy out <coughs> and that energy uh, can be drained out in many ways and because there is, um, in fact, there is a connection to ground, to the mains, 
but it is not perfect. And that means that uh, when you uh, hook up the meter on one side of the coil and let the other part of the meter, the other wire, flow free, you measure a voltage. And that's also one of the uh, typical problems of the Don Smith circuit. He's always talking about the ideal connection to ground. Well, um, forget it. Um, what he has seen is this effect. The effect of a circuit, an oscillator circuit, a self-resonant uh, circuit that strays out energy uh, in all kinds of directions, even now at the moment on radio frequencies. And um, he saw all kinds of re resonance effects, capacitive and inductive effects. And he also works with uh, spark gaps. Well, with a spark gap, you have this part of the waveform. The spark, spark between two uh, electrodes and um, then it uh, quickly or slowly swings out. So we call this a damped resonance. And also there are undamped resonances and that's, that are oscillators that don't um, use uh, a disruptive, there's no disruptive oscillation, but a constant oscillation. I've, and I've made many of these oscillators on my YouTube channel. You can find a lot of them. Sine wave oscillators, square wave oscillators, etc. The, the spark cap has typical um, electronic effects and phenomenon. And you can surely find more information about that on the World Wide Web. So that was more or less all to tell. Nothing special happens here. And it's also, the question is also where is that hidden energy uh, that um, can give a constructive wave that, that amplifies in a certain way the energy that's generated in an oscillator. Where is that energy? It's, it cannot be found. It isn't there. That's the problem. And when it's there, it's tiny. It's so extremely weak that um, perhaps uh, you can find effects in the, in the microvolt range. Anyway, another effect, when you change the voltage, you hear the oscillator. Change its frequency. And here, we don't hear the beeping sound. And still we have here that wave. So now it's oscillating on a frequency that we cannot hear. 45, 44 kilohertz. The same oscillation by the way. So uh, the type of oscillation uh, doesn't tell you something that you can get more energy out of it. So over unity or something like that. This is a completely normal phenomenon.